Hi, my name is Mark Johnston and I do STEM education. And today we're going to be doing some more with VEX VR. We just learned in the first video how to sense colors. Now we're going to actually do a little bit more advanced code in learning how to get the robot to actually count the number of lines that it goes over. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here we are back at vr.vex.com and I have the playground open and I've selected the line detector playground from the drop down list here. Uh, now I'm going to go back to activities and take a look at the activities by clicking this button. And so now we're going to do counting lines. And if I click on that, I should get a document for a uh, Google Doc here. Again, as a teacher, it's really great because I can click file, make a copy, and then of course I can edit it to my own purposes to suit my needs as a teacher. And I always like to put my own little twist on these, especially since people are gonna be out there sharing their solutions, which is fine. Um, but I just wanna make sure it's a challenge for my kids. So I went ahead and highlighted level one. It says using starting point A, program the VR robot to move and to tell it detects a black line. Now, if you watch the first video of this series, this should be no issue for you. The trick is that because black is not a color, we're going to need to use brightness. So watch closely and uh, you'll be able to apply everything that you learn and you'll be able to solve level one no problem. So I am going to go ahead and jump to level two and we're going to solve that one in this video. It says using starting point B, program the VR robot to count each black line detected while driving forward. Use a variable to track the number of lines detected and display the total number of lines detected once the VR robot reaches the end of the playground. So I'm gonna copy that text and come back over here to uh, VEX VR. And I'm gonna right click here and click add note. Then I'm gonna paste my note in here and then I have this, I can refer back to it and just know what it is that I'm working on at any time. All right, so let's break this down into some, you know, into some behaviors, some more simple behaviors. So using starting point B, all right, so I'm going to make the robot, you know, go to starting point B like this. And so there he is at starting line B, and it looks like one, two, three, four, five black lines. Of course, we want this to work so that it would detect any line. Uh, one of the things that I do before a program like this is I'll just need to do a little bit of investigation. And so what I'm gonna do is I need to see what the robot, I need to know what the robot sees while it's driving over those lines. So I'm gonna click here, click on sensing, and you can see that uh, if I were to do the colors, like detect red, green, blue, none, it doesn't help me. I need to get black. And so actually I'm going to need to use brightness. I see this little check mark here. If I click that little check mark, and then I click on this little like speedometer guy, I can see front eye brightness in percent and down eye brightness in percent. Look at the down eye brightness and percent is already at 100. So I'm going to go to drive train and then just put a drive forward. Now, of course, I'm going to crash into the wall, but this should give me uh, enough time to watch what happens to that 100. So I'll click play. It, it goes to zero. It goes one, all the way to zero when it hits each of those black lines. So that's great. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and change to C and then push play and see if I get different values. Ah, 29.9, 58.7, 11.4. And that's actually very useful in detecting colors um, because now I actually don't have to use detect red or detect blue or detect green. I could use a percentage uh, of uh, brightness. And so that's pretty cool um, if I do say so myself. But let's go ahead and take a look again. I want to see what the lowest number above zero is. So we know we have zero to 29.9, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11
58.7, 11.4. So it looks like 11 or 12. So I bet if I said, if I said it's less than 10, then I'm always going to be counting black lines. If it's less than 10, if brightness is less than 10, that's a black line. Uh, so let's just go ahead and say that I want to drive forward and then I want to wait until, and I'm going to say percentage, it has to be less than, so I'm going to go to the operators, the green operators, and say less than, put that guy in there, and then go to sensing and find my percentage, my brightness in percentage. There we go, front eye. Now it does say front eye, so I need to, uh, once I drop it in there, I'm gonna change it to the down eye. This is also a common mistake that students will make. Um, they'll wonder why it's not working. Well, they didn't select the down eye. They have it still on the front eye. All right, I'm gonna hide this away so we get a little bit more room here. And then of course, once it does see that, let's just uh, see that it, it is seeing it, and I'll just put a stop driving here um, just so I can test this out again. This is part of the process that I use. Um, oop, I need to reset and then play, and then sure enough, there it goes. And so actually, that was the level one challenge. If I started back on A, it would drive all the way and stop. Um, but let's go ahead and go back to starting point B, and now we need it to not stop, but count that. So I need to create a variable. Now it always creates a variable for us under variables. I click that little orange thing. It's called my variable. And look, you can see I was doing some stuff in here earlier. I'm gonna right click and delete that. And then I'm gonna right click and delete the my variable just so you can see if I get rid of it, this is what I see. Uh, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and make a variable and I will call it uh, num underscore black lines. And I'll submit. Uh, now it does automatically set the value of num black lines to zero in the beginning, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it there anyway, uh, just to kind of uh, good practice and know that I'm setting my variable to zero to begin with. And then notice that I have this change num black lines by one. If you can use this, if you put, for instance, if you started with five and you wanted to subtract, you could do negative one. Um, but change by one means that it's going to basically add one to whatever the, val the variable uh, is. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the stop drive and I'll put it off to the side because I am gonna need to use that again in a little bit. And now I want this to repeat. I want it to repeat and I, I'm trying to think like how can I know that I'm all the way done is once I've gone all the way to the end of the playground. Well, I have a sensor, I have those, those bumpers on the front. So I could do left bumper pressed. So while it's not pressed, so we could do repeat until or let's see while yeah repeat until is while not it it's just another block but if i go ahead and put that here and say i'll repeat until this is pressed then what's going to happen is it's going to count each time this is going to repeat it's going to wait until, oh, we needed to put less than 10, by the way. Okay, so it's going to repeat until the down eye percentage brightness is less than 10, and it's going to add one. Now, I want to show you what happens here because this is, uh, this is really interesting, and it's something that you kind of need to know with programming and with robots really any programming language, they move so fast. It, it's gonna read this so fast. So this is just repeating over and 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 over again. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to variables. I'm gonna select this little check mark next to num black lines. Oh, you know what? For some reason when the tray is open like that or closed like that, you have to 
open it anyway. So if it doesn't want to check, you might need to click this button down here. All right, so now I have none black lines and it's showing zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and push play and watch what happens to that zero as I cross the first black line. I'm gonna push play. Whoa, so that, I'm pretty sure that's not 12, 16 black lines, 20 black lines, 24 black lines. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is only uh, five, five black lines. All right, so what's happening here is that it's actually seeing that la that black line for that long. It's able to go through seven cycles uh, before it just stops. So in order for it to be considered one black line, let's think about it. It's going to be, okay, I the brightness goes to zero, and it's still zero, and it's still zero, and it's still zero, and now it's 100. So it's it's above, right? So I want to go until it's black, and then I want to actually count once it's not black again. So actually, I need a I need a greater than. So I'll go to the green operators, grab myself a greater than. My six-year-old son is learning greater than and less than, and you know he's doing the big. The monster eats the, the bigger one. Um, so funny. I was just doing that the other day. And here I am using a bunch of them. So I need to now, I need brightness. So I'll duplicate this guy and put it there. So down eye brightness percent greater than, I mean, we could do greater than say 90 just to make sure it's actually white. And then it's going to do the color. So let's go ahead and try this again. And you can see my variable still at 24 when i hit reset it's still there but when i push play it'll go to zero so zero and then there we go two three four five and it looks like it's still trying to drive did i i don't think i put the stop driving block in today oh you know what okay this is no this is a great learning opportunity now i did technically meet the requirements, but it's kind of ugly. I, I want the robot to actually stop uh, driving. But what's happening here is program flow is getting stopped by these wait commands, these wait until. Um, so what's happening is it's getting stuck in there and to, so it's looking for another black line and it'll never jump out of this it'll never go back to the top of the repeat and check to see if the bumpers pressed um, because it's just stuck there so what i'm going to do instead is use an if statement so i'll go in here and i'll say if down eye percent is if it ever hits that then i want it to wait until it's not that and then i want to change by one this should fix my program flow issue. Um, so I should be able to, should work now. All right, so here we go. And this is kind of what I was talking about as far as closing the browser. Um, normally it doesn't take, or closing the playground, normally it doesn't take this long, um, but because my computer is uh, chugging along, trying to record in uh, 4K now, by the way. Push stop here. All right, stop and then change to B and then I'll push play. And oh, I closed the monitor. And you know what? I did I got my five, but I and I did stop stop driving, but I still didn't actually complete the whole challenge. Let me let's pull this down and look back at our note, because here I was thinking, oh, I completed the challenge, but no, I would have had to do it this way. If I had those wait until's in there, it would never jump out, because I have to um, have it display the number of lines detected once the VR robot reaches the end of the playground. So I'm gonna go to looks, and I'm gonna take a print hello and actually, before the print hello, I'm going to put a clear 
all rows. I think that's good practice to get in the habit of that. If uh, you want it to be a clear console so that it just shows what you're gonna say. And then I'm actually gonna duplicate, oops, not disable. <laughs> I'm gonna duplicate this hello block and put it in here. Because notice the shape here. The shape means that I can actually put in, you know, anything that has that, uh, that rounded, um, these like reporter blocks that report values. So I'm gonna put the um, num black lines in there. But right here I'm gonna put the number of black lines is, and then I'm gonna put a semicolon and a space because I didn't go to another line, so it's gonna be this right here. Uh, it's gonna, this is gonna print out right next to it. Let's take a look. And so I'll pull the playground up here and I'll open the console. And you know, I'm gonna shrink the, the, the playground. Here we go. I'm gonna reset and play. I can see it's counting my lines, no problem. The number of black lines is five, great. Let's go ahead and test this on C. If we did it right, we should get the number of black lines is two. That's a black line. Now, is it gonna count that one? That's the trick. Did it count the blue, green, and red? And it did not. The number of black lines is two. All right, well, that's how you do level two of the activity counting lines for the line detector playground. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, this was part two of a three-part video series on using the Playground Line Detector. Uh, the next video will be covering how to set up an algorithm to cover, uh, to count different colors of lines as it drives through those different lanes. Uh, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this, I would appreciate a like and subscribing to the channel. And then of course, if uh, you do like VexBR, please join our Facebook group and even our Discord server if you have questions or comments and you'd like to chat with me or any of the other people who are using VexBR right now, we'd love to hear from you. All right, well, thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.